Hello everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tower of Saviors GNM review video. First of all, I wanted to apologize to all of you for the lack of uploads recently on my channel. I was taking a small vacation to Taiwan and I didn't have my recording equipment with me. But uh, I'm back and ready to provide you all with more Tower of Saviors videos. And while I was there, I saw the GNN news was for a new exclusive Black Hole card. So I'm really excited to see what this card is all about and see what we have in store uh, when it drops in a couple days, right? So without further ado, let's take a look at the GNN news. New exclusive Black Gold card, Prodigious Wizardry, Silovic, or yeah, Silovic, and a new Ultimate Trial of Lucius. So first things first, the new Black Gold card would debut on November 21st, which is on Monday, uh, so really soon. But yeah, the Descent of Enoch with Ingrid, um, he is the current chief of Heptara Unis and will be available on Monday at noon uh, for us to pull for him. So what is what we're most interested in really is going to be his leader skills and active skills. But as always, a new black gold card, the diamond seal will be available. Every 10 draws, you'll get three golden moth tricks and the card will be guaranteed at 40 pulls. Oh yeah, 30 for 30, that's always also pretty uh, common to have. Buy 30, get 30 diamonds free. But here we go, meat and potatoes of the uh, the new Black Gold card, which is going to be the leader skill. Team attack times 10. He is an earth human, which actually, it's a pretty good attribute and raise for the new Black Gold card. We haven't had a earth Black Gold card in a while. I think the last one we had was Qingui. Right? And then before that, it was Iron Van Princess. So having another Earth Black Gold card is actually pretty good in my opinion. And humans are also, uh, I think the last one we had, was it Aria? Or oh, Himiko. Himiko was the last human card, but Himiko didn't even play as a human because you wanted to run her with dragons and beasts. So uh, Silovic might be the first... Uh, Earth human um, black gold card and like the most recent like human black gold card. So honestly, this attribute and race really fitting for the new release uh, in my opinion. But yeah, team attack times 10. Human, earth, and dark attack increases by 2.2 and their HP also increases by 2.2. Runestone movement time increases regardlessly by 3 seconds. All attributive runestones possess 50% of all attributive runestones. And by dissolving Earth or Dark Runes, team attack increases by 4 additionally. Wow, okay, so team attack times 10 is on the higher side for the current meta, right? Uh, that's going always pretty good to have a baseline team attack times 2. Furthermore, you get an additional 2.2 for human, Earth, and Dark members, which is, in my opinion, really good as well. And if you dissolve earth or dark runes you get an additional times for team attack and this condition is honestly really really easy to hit because you can either sky drop it or i mean stack it but because you have two different runes options for this attack bonus you will not really run into runestone drought as much with him so in my opinion getting the max damage potential with Silovic is going to be pretty good easy especially just for his leader skill. At a baseline, his leader skill is really good with both um, a bunch of attack multipliers as well as runestone possession effects because that means you're not relying on his team skills for this attacking runes for your team. That being said, you will only be running mostly earth and dark members in his team, but you can run other attributive human members in his team and with this runestone position effect you will still be able to feel those attacks you also get extended runestone movement time which is also pretty good and in my opinion this is a really good leader skill because generally we only see these types of attack increases runestone possession effect and runestone movement time in characters team skills which means that usually you have to run them as leaders but still like his leader skill is pretty good 
and with Madhead introducing more cards that don't really have to run dual leader and ally, this card could potentially be a really good ally even if you don't pull for him. Uh, but yeah, now let's move on to his team skill where we have the leader is prodigious wizard Lacey Lubbock. So again, like I was saying, there's no need to run him as dual leader and ally in order to benefit from his team skills. Yeah, um, if the leader is Silovic, his HP vas basic value increases by two times. Burning and Sticky are nullified. When the last runestone movement ends in the column below Silovic, you fully recover HP. After dissolving runestones, the first batch of runestones to be dropped in the columns below humans will be enchanted runestones of the members attribute in each column. By dissolving three or more types of runestones, all members increase, have an attack increase of times three. Damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield and puzzle shield. So, okay. For each protected runestone dissolved in the first batch, Prodigious Wizard Resilovic launches an extra attack to the max of five extra attacks. When enclosed areas are in play, Prodigious Wizardry Silovic attack increases by 5 times, damage will be dealt regardless of defense, and combo count increases by 15. If there is Prodigious uh, Wizardry Silovic in the team, so this is more of a passive, um, if the attribute of Silovic is Earth after entering the stage, his skill cooldown decreases by 1 and damage dealt to enemies under their controlling skill increases by two times additionally. If there is only uh, Silovic and Earth members in the team, skill CD of all members minus two after entering the stage. There are only prodigious Wizardry Silovic and Dark members in the team. Uh, alter the attribute of Silovic into Dark. Skill cooldown of all members minus two after entering the stage, and each time Summoner enters the next wave. Silovic has uh, enters a, a hyper state for one round and skill cooldown minus two. By dissolving a group, one or more group of five or more dark runes, combo count increases by six. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Okay, okay, that's a lot to digest. And honestly, all these, the amount of team skills on this card, really does scream black gold card. And honestly, this is good uh, because normally. Some of the black gold cards like Nessoi typically don't really see that many team skills and they're like their utility is very little. But in this case, Silovic has actually a lot of utility packed into his team skills. And this is you ignore burning, you ignore sticky. Um, you also have guaranteed sky drop, and you also have like HP recovery. Basically, what it's taking, it's taking some attributes from Tsuyo because Tsuyo had the thing where if you stop movement below his column you recover HP but you're also taking uh, Rainbow Xiangyu into his team skill so for Rainbow Xiangyu oh Xiangyu was also human Xiangyu um, when you run him in Rainbow teams he also guarantees sky drop below human members of their own attribute and this is what Silovic is doing right but only for human members so if you're running like Earth Dragons or like Dark Beasts something in his team, they will benefit from Silovic's leader skill, but they will not have um, the Enchanted Runestone drop. So this is a way of encouraging you to play human team without locking you out of other attributes, you know, or like other races, in my opinion. So honestly, this is the best way to make a card. Like you encourage a certain playstyle, but you're not limiting the card into a certain playstyle. For example, yeah. So you are able to run other races, but you get more benefits if you run a mono human team because you get all those sky drops uh, from the first batch, you know? Also, you ignore fixed combo shield and puzzle shield by dissolving three or more types of rune stones, which in my opinion, it's going to be a super easy condition to hit, especially if you have that guaranteed schedule, right? If you're running like three different attributes and you only have a full hard board, right? If you dissolve the entire board, you still get those columns from the guaranteed sky drop and you will hit that three types or more condition and get a three times attack as well as ignoring fixed combo shield and puzzle shield 
which in my opinion are two of the most common enemy shields that you have just because they are yeah they're very common and being able to ignore them is going to give you like a really easy time beating those stages you also get a bunch of extra attacks uh, but these last two uh, team skills here are going to be a little bit more on the situational side protector runes we don't really have that many characters that can generate protector runes i kind of feel that Silovic himself will be able to generate protector runes but his team skill doesn't generate protector runes and the other person is um Entelec. but other than that you also have enemies that will only take damage if there are protector runes so you want to have protector runes on the board um and if you get rid of all of them, you are not dealing damage. So there's going to be some like trade-off here and there for protector runes. But in my opinion, it is just very situational. Uh, but extra attacks is always nice. Uh, if Silovic would generate protector runes every round, then that will guarantee you a way of generating extra attacks every round. But for now, I don't see anything regarding protector runes generation in his team skill. So this is just going to be situational for now. In terms of enclosed areas, this is typically an enemy skill. That being said, if the enemy has enclosed areas, then you're going to deal a lot of damage because one, your attack increases by five times and your combo count increases by 15. So honestly, if the enemy has enclosed areas, this is an amazing team skill. But if there's no enclosed areas, you don't benefit from it. So this is situational, but it is always a good bonus to have in my opinion. In terms of the passive skills that he has, uh, there is prodigious uh, wizardry Silovic in the team. This means that if these are just passives, you know. Um, oh, having a skill cooldown reduction is always nice to have. And upon defeating the enemy, um, yeah, upon defeating the enemy, you get a skill cooldown reduction of minus one. If there's multiple enemies, this means that you get more skill cooldown reduction. And we will have to see when we look at his active skill whether this is good or not. Damage will be dealt to enemies under control and skill times 2 additionally. So hopefully his skill will also generate a controlling skill. Other than that, the other two are when you're running a mono earth team with Silovic in the team. Uh, your skill cooldowns of all members minus two after entering the stage, which is pretty good because this is also when Silovic is a member and not a leader. Now, right now, because he is going to be just released, you are typically going to be running Silovic as a leader. But in the future, if you run Silovic as a member, your entire Mono Earth team will benefit from the minus two skill cooldown reduction after entering the stage. And honestly, that is pretty good in my opinion. Same thing when you're running a mono dark team with Silovic in the team, you get um, a skill, skill cooldown reduction, but you also have a hyper state for Silovic with a skill minus two cooldown every time you enter the next wave, which is honestly pretty good. And if you're running a team that generates a lot of dark roots, you also can guarantee a plus six combo every single round if you have dark roots on generation. So in my opinion, Silovic is also a really good member for a mono dark team. The only downside is that you will not be able to clear mono dark achievements with him because his base element is earth. But other than that, he would make a pretty good member for a mono dark team uh, based off his team skill um, because of the whole like um, <laughs> passive skill that you get. If you're running a mono dark team with Silovic as a leader, this is even going to be even better because you are going to be able to benefit from this team skill as well as his entire kit from the get-go. So that's pretty good in my opinion. So honestly, <laughs> Silovic as a leader seems like it would be fun to play. You are mixing elements from two different black gold cards, Tsuyo with Xiangyu, and then you also have your own like team skills to deal with right you also have a really high base attack multiplier as well as runes of possession effect so in my opinion he is a pretty good card and you don't have to run dual leader and ally which means you can run something else as an ally to further boost your damage with other like 
overpowered leader skills, you know? Um, but yeah, so now let's take a look at his active skill. Well, well, actually, let me finish my thought on his leader's potential. His team skill is also really good and deals with a lot of enemy debuffs as well as uh, board debuffs as well. And the fact that you can ignore fixed combo shield and puzzle shield is really beneficial because they are the more common enemy shields in the game. As well as ignoring burning and sticky which are also two of the more annoying and common board debuffs uh, in the game. So being able to ignore those two is honestly really good. So yeah, as a leader and as, as a leader he is in my opinion really powerful. And probably one of the more powerful cards that we've had in the game um, up till now because of the pure damage output that he deals and the utility that he provides. Um, that being said, power creep is always a thing so he might only be relevant for like a couple months before they release the next big uh, meta breaker honestly. So yeah, in my opinion really solid leader skill and team skill as well as really good passive skills which Madhead has been including recently uh, which will solidify his status as a member even when his damage output falls off the meta. So yeah. <clears throat> so now let's move on to his active skill which is going to be a CD7 skill and has the following effect. Release the lock skill of humans. Nice. Clear the hypnotized state of humans. Oh, nice. Modify earth and dark runes to become protector runes. Freeze all enemies to inactivate them from one round. The character launches an extra attack for each attribute. Damage will be dealt regardless of defense. The effect stays in play until receiving damage from an enemy's attack. If the leader is Silovic, dodge the first attack of... <laughs> um, okay, so... <laughs> I have never seen a skill that is this busted. <sighs> what the actual heck? <laughs> Wait, you're you're my god, you're kidding, right? <laughs> you're absolutely kidding me. This is wow. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a second till I compose myself. <laughs> Anyways, this skill, in my opinion, is one of... It's a really powerful skill. I'm not gonna say it's one of the most powerful skills in the game because it's not there yet. But the amount of utility you have is absolutely insane. Okay, here's it. You release the lost skill of humans. Which, yes, you are bound, you are restricted to only releasing the skills of humans, which is arguably worse than releasing the skills of all members, but it is still better than releasing the skills of the character himself. A lot of skills in the game will only release their own skill, and that's all they do, and they don't do much, right? But this skill releases all skills from human members, which it's pretty good, especially if you're running a majority human team as encouraged by his team skill. So that's pretty good already. You also clear the hypnotized state of humans, which while it's situational, it is also very rare right now for cards to clear hypnotized state of more than just themselves. So in my opinion, this is pretty good utility because we don't have much of it. So being able to clear the hypnotized state of humans is going to be pretty beneficial for any monohuman team or any predominantly human team because we don't have that many cards that will clear hypnotized states. You will also generate protective runes, which is pretty good. Uh, one of the things I was saying about is that his team skill launches extra attacks per protective runes dissolved in the first batch. But he didn't have a way to generate those. But now he does have a way to generate those protector runes. You also freeze all enemies and inactivate them for one round. Which is pretty good because you prevent the enemy from attacking you for one round. Which 
needless to say gives you one extra round to deal damage or like do whatever you need to do the downside being that the enemy is if the enemy is an uncontrollable you are not able to freeze them or inactivate them but also plays into his team skill where you deal two times damage to enemies with a control skill uh right here right damage dealt to an enemy with a controlling skill times two additionally and furthermore this doesn't only apply when Sklovic is a leader because this team skill right here the times two damage to enemies with a controlling skill is active even when Sklovic is a member so even if you have Sklovic as a member and you activate his active skill your team will benefit from this times two and this is really good because also makes Sklovic a really 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 good member for any teams that come out in the future that are able to put Silovic in the team. Launches an extra attack for each attribute, which honestly, and again, a really good active skill because there are enemies in the game. We've, we haven't seen that that often right now, but there are enemies in the game that only take damage after you hit them with a damage of every single attribute first. So the fact that Silovic can launch extra attacks of every single attribute will allow you to break those shields really easily as well. Damage will be dealt regardless of defense. That's pretty easy, but it does help you deal with um, with uh, petrified runes, even if you don't get rid of the petrified runes. Uh, but I think he already deals damage regardless of defense in his team skill uh, right here. Oh wait, no, that's only with enclosed area. So okay, yeah. So that defense break is also going to be pretty good in my opinion. And here's the thing, this effect stays in play until receiving, um, oh, okay, okay, okay. I think, yeah, so the effect of launching extra attacks and dealing damage regardless of defense will stay in play until you receive damage from the enemy's attack. But here's the thing, if the leader is Silovic, you will dodge the first attack of an enemy in the next round. Which means that, one, you are freezing the enemy this round, and then you are dodging its attack next round. So, you are basically not receiving damage pretty much, right? So, this means that your extra attacks will continue, and your defense breaking skill will also continue. But honestly, the fact that you can dodge the first attack of an enemy in the next round is also really good because it also helps you get rid of ambush enemies. And that is also really good because um, there aren't that many cards that can help you dodge attacks in the next round or dodge ambush. Uh, and if the enemy ambushes for what, like 100,000 damage, it basically kills you unless you have a way to deal with it like damage reduction or if you have a way to dodge enemy uh, attacks uh, across rounds and in my opinion that is very useful as well so in terms of active skill and in terms of utility this card has a lot and it's really powerful you're releasing skills you're clearing hypnotized state you're freezing enemies, you're generating protective runes, and you're launching extra attacks to break a 5 attribute shield. And you're dodging enemies effects if Silovic is the leader. So in my opinion, skill effects 1 through 5 have so much utility packed into them that he is going to be an ama amazing member as well. So definitely worth considering getting this card, in my opinion. He also has some bonding skills, which, you know pretty simple but overall i think his kit is very solid as a leader he is really powerful he has a lot of utility packed into his team skill already but even then he also has a lot of utility packed into his, into his active skill which will make him a really good member for your teams and unlike the other black gold cards in the game he also have a team skill that activates when he's in the team and not the leader you know and this is something that madhead has been doing more recently is giving cards passives that will trigger when they're members and 
what this does is that it actually helps them become better members in the future because those passive skills will still trigger even if you run them as members instead of leaders. And for Silovic, his passives are pretty good in my opinion, although some of them are kind of conditional for mono earth and mono dark teams, but he still has, um, yeah, he still has like pretty good uh, active skills. Uh, I mean, passive skills as members. So in my opinion, as a member, I think he might be worth getting. But here's the thing, 40 pools for a guaranteed black gold card is a lot, especially when the current card pool is not that great for the things that you can get from the um, diamond seal. But he is really powerful. I think it is arguably a very powerful card and may you may want to consider pulling for it. I will not say he is a must pull because a lot of these team skills and active skill effects that you can that you get can be achieved with other cards. That being said, you might have to combine two different active skills together or bring two different cards. Meanwhile, Silovic is just one, but you are going to be able to achieve the same effects with other cards. So he is not a must pull where oh my god if i don't have this card i will not be able to clear stages because there are active skills in the game that will do what he does but what he does is just consolidate those roles and help you build a team without having to switch members out but that's just convenience you are still going to be able to clear um stages even without him so not a must pull but I will highly recommend him because both his leader skill and his active skill are pretty insane in my opinion. But yeah, so next we have, ooh, exclusive Dragonware, which, yeah, you know, pretty good if you get him, but uh, the effects are not that great. Dragonware skill, uh, moves the moment at one second, 1.5 attack increase, and 1.5 HP basic value. By 1.15 then craft skills attack increases by 40 skills cd of four random members minus three actually that's pretty good and conversion skill Ooh, that's actually a pretty good conversion skill especially if you have to deal with a 15 15 earth dark board which is situational but still also because silovic this is a really good craft for silovic because silovic will benefit most from earth and dark members so a full board convert on his craft skill is actually going to be pretty good especially because you also get the guaranteed schedule so this is a pretty good um, column uh, conversion skill but yeah ultimate stage beast in clothes um, we have grizzly bigotry lucius which is going to be an earth beast cd7 skill and has the following effect Skill cooldown of all enemies will be delayed for one round. For one round, combos made in the first batch will be added to the total combo count. And when there is a tornado, combos made in the first batch will be added twice to the total combo count. Honestly, this is not a bad card. Um, delaying enemies for one round is like gives you one extra round to deal more damage or do um, activate effects that you need to activate or stall for different enemy debuffs, for example. I don't know, one round of 100% attack reduction, things like that. Uh, increasing your combo count, basically what he does is to double your combo count um, in the first batch. So if you do six combos in the first batch, you have a total of 12 combo. And if there's a tornado in play, this basically triples your combo skill. And in my opinion, this is really, really good because typically when you have tornadoes, you don't have access to your entire board. If you have two tornadoes, you only have access to 20 rooms. And at most, you can only clear five combos in the first batch. So being able to increase your combo count to deal with high combo shields is going to be really good. I, we have encountered enemies that have tornadoes and also have like a greater than eight combos, which means that this skill will be perfect to counter those attacks. That being said, there's no attack increase, so this is a pure utility card. 
So depending on the stage, it might be really good to have him. But I do think he is a situational card and not a staple to have in your teams. I would only slot him if you have space, which right now uh, team slot space is very premium and you want to run cards that can do multiple things. But this card is good for one thing, which is tornado combo increase uh, and delaying enemies for run round. But um, other cards can do that as well. I think his niche is being able to provide you with extra combos when there are tornadoes in play. And if that happens, this is a really good card to have. But other than that, in other scenarios, I would run other cards that can do more in terms of team attack boosting or more utility in one team slot. But honestly, this is a pretty good card. I do recommend getting one copy of him uh, for sure, because this tornado combo increase may save you uh, in certain cases. We also have a all-star championship that eh, maybe I'll join, but we'll see. And then we have Jailbreakers, ooh, the new card. And Popo, which is a light beast card, CD6, release the lock skill of the character. Upon successful release, the character enters a hyper state for three rounds. Turn um, fire into heart and earth into light, and for three rounds, damage received minus 60%. Honestly, not a bad skill, but kind of underwhelming. So, you know, it's a bi weekly card, uh, not that much to say. Here, this is the thing I was talking about Silovic, where a lot of characters release the lock skill of the own character, and honestly, those are pretty eh. Especially if your attacks are also locked. Imagine if Popo is the only person to launch attacks. There's no attack increase, there's no like anything, so there's not that much to do, even if you release your skill. So, you know. Might as well release the skills of other characters as well. The conversion skill is also kind of mid and the damage reduction is nice uh, for three rounds, but we are in the current meta where you want to kill things quickly and reducing your damage received by 60% for three rounds might be good, but if you can kill your enemies, that's even better because they are not launching attacks. Uh, but still three rounds of minus 60 percent damage reduction is good especially if you have three rounds debuffs or things like that but in my opinion i think there are better cards for that that being said i do recommend getting one copy bringing him to dual max maybe because he might be um he might be a good card in the future especially for beast teams having an extended three round damage reduction is actually pretty beneficial in my opinion but yeah, so that's the end of the GNN. So just to review, we have a completely new black gold card, um, which is going to be a human earth card with a pretty good leader skill with high damage multipliers with easy conditions to hit, as well as runes to possession effect and extended runes to movement time. And that is just in his leader skill, which is going to be pretty good because that gives you that baseline uh, from the get-go. For his team skill, he does have a lot of utility packed into it, ignoring Burning Sticky, Fixed Combo Shield, and Puzzle Shield with an additional 3 times attack tied to a really easy condition to hit as well. You also have Guaranteed Skydrop and a way to fully recover HP without relying on your recovery stats, which in my opinion is one of the best team skills to have because you don't have to rely on Heart Runes or on other uh, ways to generate uh, recovery. Um, also, this means that you are able to run Panda in this team because you don't require hard runes to heal and all attributed runestones possess the effect of attributed runestones, which means that hard runes are excluded from that runes to possession effect, which means that getting rid of hard runes might be beneficial for you. Um, <laughs> but yeah. By dissolving three or more types of runestones, you do get ignore fixed combo shield and puzzle shield, but you also have um, an additional three times attack. Back to his team skill, he also has extra attack launching and also other member passive skills that don't require him to be a leader to activate. This means that even if you run him as a member in other leader teams, 
you are still going to benefit from these passive skills, which further solidifies his status as a member once he falls off the meta. For his active skill, he is pretty busted in my opinion. The active skills has a lot of utility packed into it, and it synergizes really well with his team skill and leader skill because um, he does get a times two controlling skill uh, attack, and he also generates extra attacks when he dissolves protected runes. However, as a member, this active skill also packs a lot of utilities that are not tied to him being a leader, which means that he is going to be a really good member card. All in all, I do think he is one of the more powerful cards in the game, and I do think that he is worth considering pulling, in my opinion. Definitely not a must pull, like I said before, because there are cards in the game that can do what he does, but uh, he does consolidate a lot of utility into one single team slot, which is going to be really beneficial as team slots get more premium and more premium uh, throughout the times. Other than that, we have a new ultimate stage, which is going to be Julius. He does, uh, his active skill is pure utility, but when that utility comes into play, he will be irreplaceable, especially with tornadoes. And if Madhead decides to slap on a, I don't know, 12 combo, for a tornado enemy uh, that is going to be pretty hard to hit but as leaders have their own combo increasing effects this card might not see that much play but in my opinion he is situational but definitely still worth getting one copy for him in terms of the bi-weekly card it is a little bit underwhelming compared to the other two cards that we've seen but there is that that is normal for a bi-weekly card but in my opinion beast cards don't really have damage reduction uh, across multiple rounds so this card might be good to have in your inventory just in case but yeah that's all for this week's gnn news um i hope you enjoyed this installment and please let me know in the comments if i said anything wrong or if i missed out on anything and again i apologize for the lack of uploads in the past few weeks um as always stay tuned on my youtube channel i'll be posting more content more often nowadays now that i'm back and yeah <laughs> for now stay safe stay healthy and i will see you next time bye everyone